Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today is a very important day in the world of jailbreaking because following Apple's March media event, the company released iOS 9.3 to the general public, ensuing seven beta releases. Apple went absolutely crazy with beta seeds this time around. They wanted to ensure that iOS 9.3 was as close to perfect as possible by the time it reached the public, and I'm going to get into why in just a second, but first of all, if you don't want to watch this entire video for whatever reason that may be, down below below in the description or more info, there will be a table of contents that will allow you to more easily skip around throughout this video to which section or sections most interest you. So up first, we need to talk about iOS 9.3 in general because it's a pretty big update and it does have some significant revisions over its predecessor being iOS 9.2.1, which was mostly issued for security reasons. So let's start off with the changes found inside of iOS 9.3. Apple is now finally introduce their own iteration of Flux. It's called Night Shift and essentially it reduces the device's color warmth at night to make the viewing experience significantly easier. Basically it shifts the blue point to warmer colors so that way it doesn't cause as much eye strain and it helps so much. I've been using Flux for years and I know a number of my viewers absolutely love it as well. Next we have security for notes. Users are now able to lock the notes application with a password and if their device does have Touch ID support, you can then take it one step further and lock your notes with Touch ID. Now news will actually have an improved for you algorithm to more accurately bring back stories that it thinks are more relevant to you and your interests. So that's good there. We also have some revisions to the default health application and the kind of dashboard view more closely mimics what we have on the Apple Watch. So it's taking design cues from the Apple Watch. It's a good move on Apple's part to keep things unified, so that makes sense in iOS 9.3. We also have extended CarPlay features, and now devices running iOS 9.3 that connect to CarPlay will get a more similar experience to what they have inside of iOS 9 when inside of the Music and Maps applications. Music will have the new and for you tabs, whereas Maps will let you easily find places around you with the nearby feature. And finally, iOS 9.3 extends upon its education suite. So now educators will be able to more easily deploy and manage education devices in the classrooms. And now let's get into jailbreaking and how iOS 9.3 will play a role in the release of the next untethered jailbreak utility. Recently, as I'm sure the majority of you are well aware, Pangu issued an update to their Pangu 9 jailbreak utility for iOS 9.1 and not the public firmware at the time, which was iOS 9.2.1. It was definitely seen as a rather strange move that jailbreak developers would spend time creating and then issuing a jailbreak for a firmware that was so far outdated. Now I actually created an in-depth video on that very topic. If you happen to miss it, I will have it linked directly in your cards right now, but we're going to summarize it briefly in today's video. Essentially, iOS 9.1 doesn't patch as much of the Pangu 9 jailbreak as one would think. More exploits are patched in its successor being iOS 9.2 than the firmware that actually closed the Pangu jailbreak to begin with iOS 9.1. Really, there are only two things that iOS 9.1 closed, and that can be confirmed when we actually search for the term Pangu on the iOS 9.1 security change log, which I have right here. You can find it just by searching for iOS 9.1 security inside of Google. You can see that we have, you can see that it does bring back two results right there, and whoops, I accidentally canceled out of it, so we're going to have to search for it again on the page. Remember, just Pangu. And the most important one is actually the second one that's listed here. As you can see for the description, it states a memory corruption issue existed in the kernel. This issue is addressed through improved memory handling. So this was the primary kernel exploit that Pangu utilized for their iOS 9.0.x jailbreak. That was closed in iOS 9.1, and that was the real blow to the Pangu jailbreak. Again, we only have one other thing patched as well, and this is just config D. So the real thing here is the kernel exploit. Well, guess what? Another hacker, not part of Pangu, his name is Loki Hart, actually passed Pangu along a brand new kernel bug that they could utilize that wasn't functional on iOS 9.2 or higher. So essentially, he just said, hey, I have this exploit. Can you guys do anything? with it, they actually rolled it into Pangu 9 and basically released it after some testing. So they themselves didn't do the true exploit discovery work. That again is required when new jailbreak utilities 
are released. So it's basically just to hold jailbreakers stuck on iOS 9.1 over until they can actually release another jailbreak or until Taiji comes onto the scene again and releases their next tool. Remember, there are two teams currently developing in the world of jailbreaking. We have Pangu who released the last two jailbreaks and then we also have Taiji. Remember, they not only jailbroke iOS 8.1.x, but also iOS 8.3 and 8.4, the last major jailbreak for iOS 8. Now, like I said, jailbreak developers for some time now have been waiting for iOS 9.3. That's kind of the end game, so to speak, because Apple will actually divert their attention to developing for iOS 10 very very soon. June, which is when Apple always holds their Worldwide Developers Conference, isn't far off, and at said conference, commonly referred to as WWDC, Apple always issues new beta firmwares, but not just any beta firmwares, the next major installment to iOS. So in June, we will get our first glimpse at iOS 10, and we'll also get our first iOS 10 beta, which means they'll have to allocate more and more resources to developing for iOS 10. Since they have to meet that June deadline for the first beta of iOS 10. That means they're going to pull people off of development for iOS 9. And that's also probably why iOS 9.3 received seven new beta iterations was because they wanted to ensure that iOS 9.3 was as close to perfect as possible, which I mentioned earlier. So that way they wouldn't have to release many more updates. iOS 9.3 will almost certainly be the last 9.8 X update before iOS 10 goes public this coming fall. And what I mean by that is there will most likely not be an iOS 9.4, though there could very well be subsequent iOS 9.3.x updates, just minor firmwares. Now the exact same thing can actually be seen last year and in the years that preceded, but we're going to focus on iOS 8 in this case. Apple released iOS 8.4 with Apple Music, and that was pretty much the last 8.x update. We did however receive iOS 8.4.1 to close the Taiji jailbreak, but that was some time after iOS 8.4 was released, and that was actually the only thing it really offered, security improvements. So iOS 9.3 is definitely the end of the road from a development standpoint for both Apple as well as jailbreakers. And with iOS 10 so close, the entire cycle is about to restart. Remember guys, there are patterns that emerge throughout time and they continue to repeat themselves. And now this time around, we will most likely receive one last iOS 9 jailbreak from either Taiji or Pangu before iOS 10 drops. And at this point, you're probably wondering, well, when can we see a new jailbreak for iOS 9.3? That's a great question. If we look back to previous jailbreak utilities, they're almost always released with the exception of this Pangu iOS 9.1 jailbreak update about one to two weeks following a firmware that jailbreak developers were indeed targeting. So in this case, we have iOS 9.3 provided Taiji or Pangu. Again, whichever team ends up releasing the next jailbreak is mostly done with their utility. Then we could see a new jailbreak tool within the next two weeks or so. So hopefully end of March, beginning of April. Of course, though, as I'm sure the majority of you are aware at this point, things are rapidly changing in the world of jailbreaking. Remember, no one really saw the iOS 9.1 jailbreak coming because Loki Heart, a completely separate individual ended up discovering that very valuable kernel bug that was exclusive to iOS 9.1 and didn't function on 9.2 or higher. So if you were to ask me right now whether you should update to iOS 9.3 and you're currently on an unjailbreakable firmware being 9.2 or 9.2.1, then I would say no, hold off, stay where you're at until a new jailbreak is released and we know definitively. Now as for other individuals who may potentially release a new jailbreak, there is one in specific that I'm sure some of you are thinking of, but remember, it's imperative to know that until someone proves themselves in jailbreaking, we can't really expect or count on them to release a jailbreak. Even if you think said individual may have provided proof, chances are good they haven't. Because if you think a screenshot is proof of a completed jailbreak, think again, it's definitely not. Screenshots can easily be faked. Videos are a little bit harder, but that's also doable. Remember, the only thing that we can actually count on and that adds credit to 
a developer's name is some sort of contribution to the world of jailbreaking in the past, whether it be the release of a new utility or the contribution to the release of a utility, such as Luca Tedesco or Loki Heart in this last iOS 9.1 jailbreak. And speaking of Luca Tedesco, I know a lot of you are hyped that he said he has a jailbreak that is fully functional and even worked on the latest iOS 9.3 beta. Remember, he's not going to release a new jailbreak himself. He's said so a number of times, and I actually reminded you guys on Twitter the other day, I took this quick screenshot of a conversation between him and several individuals on Twitter. They were asking him if he was really going to release a 9.2 to 9.3 jailbreak this past weekend. He said no. It was followed up by the first individual saying that means he won't release a jailbreak, and then he confirmed that he's been saying that for months. He had that typo in there, several individuals commented on it, and he corrected it again confirming that he meant months. So he's not going to release a jailbreak. He did, however, contribute to the release of the original Pangu 9 jailbreak, and he may do something similar to that in the future. But we can't count on Luca Tedesco to release a jailbreak himself. I really need you guys to know and understand that. That's critical. The only two developers that we know for a fact will release utilities moving forward are Taiji as well as Pangu. And remember, I'm going to keep you guys completely updated with everything related to jailbreaking moving forward. If you have yet to subscribe, I definitely recommend doing so. That way you won't miss out. Just click the subscribe button below next to my channel name. Also, you can like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter for even more frequent updates. And quickly, I want to remind you guys of an awesome service that I run called Free Apps Fast, which essentially allows you to download sponsored applications for points. They're just regular free apps that you can download and install earn some points after trying them, and then you can go to the third rewards tab and redeem some really cool prizes, including paid apps from Apple's App Store, completely free, as well as PayPal cash and gift cards. New free apps fast restocks come regularly. I'm also planning on doing some really awesome giveaways through free apps fast soon. Again, remember to stay tuned. And until next time, this is ICU signing out. Join the iCrack Your Advice community on Patreon to help out the channel and to be featured in videos similar to these top contributors. Click the link on your screens now if you're on desktop or check below.